1979, General Robert H. Barrow was appointed 27th Commandant of the Marine Corps. Now ask yourself, how did this St. Francisville native become so highly ranked in the military? Here's a story. There are many wonderful citizens of the parish of West Feliciana buried here in the cemetery at Grace Church, but the greatest of all of them is General Robert H. Barrow, the 27th Commandant of the Marine Corps, a four-star general, the first commandant of the, of the uh, Marine Corps ever to serve on the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the only commandant buried outside of Arlington National Cemetery. General Barrow was, was born and raised uh, right here in West Feliciana Parish. Uh, the Barrow family is one of the, the oldest and, and largest families in the area. Uh, he grew up in his family's ancestral home in Roselle. Uh, Roselle Plantation is just a few miles north of St. Francisville. Robert Barrow was educated at Julius Freehand School, which is currently being renovated, uh, attended LSU, left LSU in 1942 when World War II broke out to join the Marine Corps. And shortly after joining, attended Officer Candidate School, became a second lieutenant, and was stationed behind enemy lines in Japanese-controlled China. He served on secret missions all through World War II. Uh, his military career continued to advance. He, during the uh, Korean War, he was uh, part of the what is now known as Frozen Chosen, Retreat from Chosen Reservoir. And in that campaign, uh, then Captain Barrow earned the, uh, the Navy Cross for doing nothing less than saving the entire Second Army of the United States from extinction. This was when the Chinese forces had completely encircled the United Nations and U.S. forces with the intention of annihilating them. And uh, General Barrow, in fact, he told me this story one time. I had the great privilege of uh, visiting him up in his home in North Carolina. Walked outside uh, one day and he was, uh, he was having trouble putting the, an attachment onto his golf cart. And he, he told me that he kind of had a little bit of frostbite. And I asked him, I said, General Barrow, I, I bet there's a story behind that. And uh, we sat down and for about 45 minutes he told me this wonderful story, but it was this time when he was, when what he did was capture this hill and he described in great detail how he did it. What he said was is that when he, when uh, it became time for the armies to move out to try to be able to escape, there was one hill that was in the, in the way and on top of that hill was a company of, of uh, Chinese uh, military with machine guns pointing straight down at the uh, the defile it was protected all the way around and the only way to capture this hill and allow the armies to escape was to walk up this hill straight up this hill directly into machine gun fire and when it became time to do it when they couldn't wait any longer he gathered his men and he got to the bottom of the hill and right at that moment a snowstorm started. This was very, very cold. Many people say that it's the coldest that they've ever been in their lives, but it was, it started snowing so hard that nobody could, that the Chinese could not see them. And as they, he described in great detail how they crawled on their hands and their knees, carrying their weapons all the way up the hill. And right when they got to the top of the hill, the sun broke out. And then he ended his story by saying, and then we took care of our business. It was a very gentlemanly way of ending a very, very heroic story. And that is, the, uh, that is the action that won him, when he held that hill, that was the action that won him the, uh, the Navy Cross. Uh, after, after Korea, he served, uh, he was uh, involved in a number of what I still understand to be uh, secret missions. Uh, because of his experience in World War II, he was posted in a lot of high, very low profile, but very important uh, positions around the, the uh, Pacific Theater. After that, and during when the Vietnam War heated up, uh, he actually rose to the, to the rank of Brigadier General during the, the, uh, the uh, Vietnam War. And General Westmoreland, who was in charge of all the troops, uh, said that uh, his comment about General Barrow was is that Robert Barrow was the finest regimental commander in the entire war. And uh, that is where he uh, was involved with a, a campaign called Operation Dewey Canyon, where he used helicopter gunships to post his troops in forward positions and really did a, a magnificent job of, of, of ridding this particular area of the, the threat of uh, encroachment from the Chinese forces. After Vietnam, um, he uh, uh, 
after Vietnam, he became, uh, he really kind of rose through the ranks, but he, he wound up being the commandant of the Marine Corps. And he's generally credited as, as being the, the savior of the Marine Corps. Uh, General Barrow instituted a number of uh, important uh, changes in the way that the Marine Corps recruits, um, particularly requiring high school graduation, among other uh, requirements. But uh, the many people, and I spoke to a number of generals at, at uh, his funeral, who said that, that he, they generally credit him with, with enacting a lot of the programs that have kept the Marine Corps at the forefront of the armed services. Uh, General Barrow retired in, in 1983 and moved back to his native West Feliciana Parish with his wife, Miss Patty, and uh, spent uh, the remainder of his life here. And I, I, I like to tell the story that, that John Sinet, our rector emeritus at, at Grace Church tells, when he says that the world knew General Barrow as a warrior, but we knew him as a gentleman, and a gentleman he really was. Uh, to watch him take care of uh, Miss Patty in the la their later years, uh, they were here for uh, more than 20 years, uh, you know, after he retired, and, and he was just a, a very dignified. It was wonderful to watch how he, he took care of Miss Patty, especially in her later years when she, when she lost her sight. And, uh, it was uh, it, it was very rewarding to watch, but it was at the same time you knew uh, who General Barrow was. Uh, you could you could walk into this church on Easter Sunday with the house packed, and uh, you could pick out the, the four-star Marine General in about two seconds. Ramrod straight, great dignity, an air of invincible authority. Uh, he, you knew that you were in the presence of a great man uh, any time you were around him, and the wonderful stories. He had great, great stories that he told about uh, his friendship with Ronald Reagan, his, his, uh, his war exploits. He, he, had, uh, he had wonderful stories to tell. And then when he died, his funeral was like nothing this parish had ever seen before. Uh, the entire Marine Corps marching band was in attendance. It was a beautiful day. The Marines, generals by the score, colonels, every every rank of Marines were there. The, the current commandant and, and several of the, the uh, prior commandants of the Marine Corps in attendance, dignitaries of every stripe, packed house uh, throughout. And, and after the um, uh, after the the, the service as the as the procession wound its way down Ferdinand Street and up Royal Street, you know, all with a, a full Marine Corps go honor guard, the, the marching band, the Marine Corps marching band leading the way. We came back to the graveyard and with the with the 21 cannons booming in the distance out by the river, and then the honor guard set up right over here seven honor guard firing a, a 21 gun salute in his honor and then you know right as the final words were being said you hear the rumble and here come four navy jets flying low overhead in the missing man formation it was a sight that put goosebumps on on everybody's shoulder that was a at that point, we knew that this, this nation recognized the greatness of our parish's greatest citizen, General Robert H. Barrow. I knew General Barrow from uh, through the family. We would have uh, meetings every now and then, our family reunion type things. And uh, of course, he grew up here in the, in the parish. And uh, so I knew him and I followed his career. My father and he were cousins as, I, as he was a cousin of mine. That's how I knew him. Well, he was very definite about what he thought and, the, and the, he had ideas and uh, one side thing I remember if I, if uh, he was, when he was the commandant, uh, he actually insta uh, would put together a program for the, uh, and I can't think of the name, it's a, a readiness for our troops all around the world at any time the, that uh, danger struck, the general had set up a deal where he had people in, on ships and Marines on ships and all to where they could respond uh, to protect uh, the American and American people. But he was a, a very nice, very 
well-spoken individual. Uh, from a family, we had a lot of people in the Civil War and all, and we, uh, my brother and I, both my brother, my older brother, uh, also a cousin, of course, of General Barr, was a Marine Corps, uh, in the Marine Corps, and, and went in Korea, and also um, Japan. Uh, he was stationed there at a, on a Marine Air Wing, but... Uh, Tell them what Carter Percy said about General Barrow. Well, the the uh, a friend of his and a, and a one of the, a person that lives here and that lives right down the road who is deceased now, but he was a friend of General Barrow when they were children, and he said he always thought that the general was going to be a soldier because he walked around all the time with a toy gun on his shoulder and and marched everywhere he went. <laughs> He did well in school, as far as the family would talked about and everything. He was really a, an intelligent, smart human being. No, it never dawned on me that he would end up being the head of the entire Marine Corps for the United States. And also, he, uh, well, he was very close to the White House and all. And the story goes is that your father went to the general when the general was on the board of Energy Corporation here, this was after he was right. he was interviewing him, trying to, he went to see the general out at Roseau to try to talk to him about getting on at possibly at Energy at the nuclear plant there. And um, while he was sitting on the front porch with the general, a maid came out and said, General, you have a phone call, a very important phone call. The White House is called. Uh. He was the perfect Southern gentleman. He treated ladies with such uh, the utmost respect and he was so complimentary and uh, he was just a perfect gentleman. And um, he loved the St. Francisville area. In fact, he gave a speech at the auditorium and he talked about coming back home and how this was God's country and he really loved being back home. Well, I've known General Barra's family, and my family did, for many years, and that's how I knew him. And he also was our neighbor right down the street. And, and he, he had a house in North Carolina, and he was our neighbor up in North Carolina. <laughs> and uh, we just enjoyed knowing he and Patty and being their friends, and we think it's a privilege to have been friends with such a famous man. He was a true, true leader. And that was evident after he uh, uh, retired, after he uh, retired from being commandant and retired from the Marine Corps. He moved back to St. Francisville here. And he spent about half of his time in Washington uh, conferring with the War Department and the President on military matters. Well, uh, I'll tell you one story. He used to tell that when he was uh, in LSU and he couldn't go back, when he left LSU after his second year, um, he joined the Marine Corps because he said he could do if he went home to Roselle, his father would make him uh, work on the plantation. And being a Marine had to be easier than working on the plantation in his house in North Carolina. Uh, he had a, a huge collection of these little metal soldiers in a bookcase. Every shelf was a different regiment and they were, it was really a, a, quite an impressive uh, uh, display. Uh, he actually uh, didn't talk much about his uh, personal war experiences. He was, he was kind of reluctant to do that. Although we did on several occasions talk, uh, 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 convince him to tell us more, it was always very interesting. I would guess that uh, uh, he was a good student, uh, but I guess he, being a strong, healthy young man, kind of liked to play more than he liked to study. And uh, I think we all knew he was destined for greater things. Unfortunately, on October 30th, 2008, General Robert H. Barrow died at the age of 86 from natural causes. 
He was buried at Grace Cemetery and was the first animal of the Marine Corps Commandant not to be buried at Arlington National Cemetery. He chose to be buried there because it was what he considered home. He was buried with full military honors next to his wife, Peggy.